This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Este es el día que hizo el Señor. Regocijémonos y alegrémonos en ello. Welcome to each of you to our worship service here at Casa Emmanuel uh, United Methodist Church here in Dallas. Today is Sunday, August the 8th, and I'm uh, Reverend Paul Barton, and glad to be here with you all this morning. Uh, welcome also to those who are joining us on our, uh, on our video, on Facebook Live, or those who will be with us also when uh, they watch uh, the videos that we post to our website. Uh, welcome also to our new and improved service, uh, which means uh, actually to, to our bilingual, yes, how's that? Welcome to our new and improved service, which means our bilingual service. So this is a, a, the first time that we're offering now our regular service at 11 o'clock, uh, both in English and Spanish. Bienvenidos a ustedes a nuestro culto. Este es el primer domingo cuando estamos ofreciendo el culto en uh, una manera bilingüe a las 11 de la mañana. Y gracias por estar con nosotros. Uh, sabemos que esta es la primera vez que estamos haciendo este culto uh, bilingüe. Uh, y entonces esperamos escuchar de ustedes cómo, cómo pasa uh, este, nueva, uh, este nuevo formato. Ahora, let us prepare our hearts and our minds to worship as we listen to the prelude by Ryan Lake. Uh, preparemos nuestros mentes y corazones al escuchar el preludio de Ryan Lake. I invite you to stand if you are able for the opening prayer. Les invito a ponerse de pie para la oración de apertura. Vamos a orar todos juntos. Lord, we come to you this day with so many things going on in our lives. Some of these things are wonderful and cause us to rejoice. However, there are far too many things that cause us fear and anxiety. Humbly we wait for your presence with us. We need your healing touch. Feed us with the bread of life that we may hunger no more. Strengthen us to do your will, for it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Señor, venimos a ti este día con tantas cosas sucediendo en nuestras vidas. Algunas de estas cosas son maravillosas y nos hacen regocijarnos. Sin embargo, hay demasiadas cosas que nos causan miedo y ansiedad. Humildemente esperamos tu presencia con nosotros. Necesitamos tu toque sanador. Aliméntanos con el pan de vida 
para que no tengamos más hambre. Fortalécenos para hacer tu voluntad, porque es en el nombre de Jesús. Oramos. Amén. Uh, opening hymn is a hell of power in Jesus' name. El nombre de Jesús lo lo uh, And we'll sing one and two in Spanish and five and six in English. One and two in Espanol. Cinco and six in English. In, in Good morning. Today's children's lesson comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 41 to 51. And in it, Jesus says, I am the living bread. And that's a little confusing because we all know what bread is. We spent a lot of time the last two weeks speaking about bread and how important bread was to the people in Jesus' time. But we don't normally think of bread being alive. But bread has living organisms in it and they're called yeast. And this is a jar of yeast. And they're probably in this jar of yeast, billions of these little yeast cells. And yeast cells are a type of fungus, which means they're related to mushrooms, although you wouldn't think it from looking from them. And what the yeast does in the bread is it makes the bread bubble up and rise. Bread that's made with yeast looks like this. It's fluffy and it has a good texture 
and it's fun to eat. Bread with, made without yeast is not very appetizing. It's kind of like this brick. It would be thick and very hard to eat. So I'm going to do a real quick experiment that shows you how yeast is alive and how yeast works. Okay. I'm going to show you how we know yeast is alive. I have just a few things here for a little experiment. I have warm water and the water needs to be between 105 and 110 degrees. So I'm going to take one fourth cup of the warm water and put it in my mixing dish. Then here's some dry activated yeast. And I'm going to take and put in the water two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. One, two, and a quarter. And I'm going to put in two teaspoons of granulated sugar. And then I'm going to stir this really good. And we're going to cover it. We're going to come back in about 10 minutes and see what happens. Okay, we've done our experiment. The yeast is set for a while and you can look at how much it's grown. And you can see what kind of effect the yeast working in the bread had on the bread. Well, Christ calls himself the living bread. So in a way, Christ is comparing himself to yeast. So how does Christ work like yeast in the church? Well, Christ works like yeast in the church because he is the force that keeps us working and the church growing and things moving. And the church without Christ would be kind of flat, thick, and not very interesting, kind of like this brick. And in a way, too, we're the yeast, because inside of each and every one of us, we have a little bit of the image of God, the image of Christ inside us, and it's that part of us that drives us to be the very best person and the very best Christian that we can be. Now yeast, as you saw from the experiment, I fed it sugar. Yeast has to be fed and taken care of to make sure that it stays alive. Just in the same way that the church and the members of the church need to be fed and cared for so that they stay alive and the church stays alive. Now, how can you do this? Well, we feed ourselves in different ways. Some of them are, you know, Jesus says the two main commandments are to love God and to love our neighbors as much as we love ourselves. So we do things to, to stay in love with God, like reading the Bible and listening to the word of God when it's preached in church. And we do things to help other people whenever we can. But it also means that we're supposed to love ourselves as much as we love the other people. So that means that in order to take care of the church and to keep the church growing, we have to take care of ourselves too. We have to make sure that we get enough to eat. We have to make sure that we sleep. We have to make sure that we exercise and that we play and that we have fun. So we're just as much the yeast in the church as Christ is the yeast in the church. And we all have to do our part to keep things growing. 
because with the yeast, the church will continue to grow and be healthier. So let us pray. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus into the world to be the yeast that keeps the church alive and spreads God's word to all the world. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Reading from the epistle to the Ephesians, chapter 4, 25 to chapter 5, verse 2. No more lying, then. Each of you must tell the truth to the other believer, because we are all members together in the body of Christ. If you become angry, do not let your anger lead you into sin. And do not stay angry all day. Don't give the devil a chance. If you used to rob, you must stop robbing. Start working it in order to earn an honest living for yourself and to be able to help the poor. Do not use harmful words, but only helpful words, the kind that build up and provide what is needed, so that what you say will do good to those who hear you. And do not make God's Holy Spirit sad, for the Spirit is God's mark of ownership on you, a guarantee that the day will come when God will set you free. Get rid of all bitterness, passion, and anger. No more shouting or insults. No more hateful feelings of any sort. Instead, be kind and tenderhearted to one another and forgive one another as God has forgiven you through Christ. Since you are God's dear children, you must try to take him. Your life must be controlled by love. Just as Christ loved us and gave his life for us as a sweet smelling offering and sacrifice that pleases God. Por lo tanto, dejando la mentira, hable cada uno a su prójimo con la verdad, porque todos somos miembros de un mismo cuerpo. Si se enojan, no pequen, no permitan que el enojo les dure hasta la puesta del sol, ni den cabida al diablo el que robaba, que no robe más, sino que trabaje honradamente con las manos para tener que compartir con los necesitados. Eviten toda conversación obscena. Por el contrario, que sus palabras contribuyan a la necesaria edificación y sean de bendición para quienes escuchan. No agraven al Espíritu Santo de Dios, con el cual fueron sellados para el día de la redención. Abandonen toda amargura, ira y enojo, gritos y columnas y toda forma de malicia. Más bien sean bondadosos, compasivos unos con otros y perdónense mutuamente. Así que Dios los perdonó a ustedes en Cristo. 
Por tanto, imitar a Dios como hijos muy amados y lleven una vida de amor, así como Cristo nos amó y se entregó por nosotros como ofrenda y sacrificio fragante para Dios. Dios bendiga la lectura de la palabra de Dios. Gracias a Dios. Gracias. Our next hymn, you know, is in moments así, in moments like these. So we'll sing it in Espanol and in English. <laughs> You may be seated. I hope that during this time of our offering that you will remember the ways that God has worked in your lives, the way that God has worked in the lives of those around you and in our world. I pray that you will give your offering to God in a joyful and gladful and grateful spirit as we listen to our anthem at this point. Espero que todos que pueden dar sus ofrendas con gozo, con gratitud, recordando las muchas bendiciones que hemos recibido por la semana pasada y también como hemos visto Dios obrando en el mundo alrededor de nosotros. Our, our anthem this morning is your, you are holy, Eres Santo, so it's in English and in Spanish, by uh, Per Harley.
beautiful anthem. Please join me in prayer for our offering. Patient and merciful God, we hear your call to love and to live as Christ loved us and gave himself for us. Our ears hear these words in our worship and our minds know what they mean and our hearts long to follow them. But we know that tomorrow we will be tempted to slip into the familiar life where we ourselves become the center of the world and the needs that we focus on, focus more on ourselves and on others. In our giving this day, O oh Lord, help us to strengthen our resolve to love as Christ loves us. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Dios paciente, misericordioso, escuchamos tu llamado a vivir en amor como Cristo nos amó y se entregó a sí mismo por nosotros. Nuestros oídos escuchan estas palabras en nuestra adoración y nuestras mentes saben lo que significan y nuestros corazones anhelan seguirlos. Pero sabemos que mañana estaremos tentados a deslizarnos hacia la vida cotidiana donde nosotros mismos estamos en el centro de nuestro mundo y las necesidades en las que nos enfocamos son casi completamente nuestras. Al dar estas ofrendas este día, oh Dios, ayúdanos a fortalecer nuestra determinación de amar como Cristo nos ama, porque en Él es el nombre de Jesús, y en su nombre oramos. Amén. We will continue in our path with our pastoral prayer, uh, raising up those persons who are in need of, of prayer. Uh, and those uh, all around us in our world and in our church and those close to us. Vamos a levantar nuestras peticiones a Dios, recordando personas en necesidad, uh, tanto los que están cerca de nosotros como los que están lejos uh, también. Yo quiero, I want to begin uh, with a prayer of thanksgiving to uh, see uh, a number of our church members who have been missing for uh, several weeks uh, who are now with us. Uh, we, we're so glad to see you, Linda and Karen and Sherry. Uh, thank you all for, for being with us and also for Alex and Nellie. We're glad to see you all again after absence of a number of weeks. It gives us much joy to see you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes, I want to give thanks to God for my life, for one more year of life, and may He be a lot more years. And I also want to have a prayer for people suffering from the Delta virus that's going around, and uh, ask y'all to pray for everybody that's been sick, God be sick. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We, we had a prayer for our people uh, during Sunday school. Uh, we were able to celebrate his little birthday party. Glad that, uh, that your class can do that for you. Uh, so we give thanks for another year of life for Albino. And we also uh, pray for uh, all those who are suffering from the coronavirus. And if you've seen the news, you've seen that uh, cases around the country have increased down to over 100, uh, 120,000, and they expect it to go close to 200,000. So uh, we want to remember those who are uh, suffering from that, as well as the medical workers. Queremos dar gracias a Dios por los cumpleaños de Albino, y también a Eric en medio de dar gracias a Dios por otro año de vida, está recordando las muchas personas que están sufriendo por el la coronavirus, que ahora es más que 120 mil personas uh, cada día que están uh, contagiadas por COVID y va a subir hasta 200 mil. Entonces, to todavía no hemos salido y gracias por ustedes que están usando su sus máscaras, que si necesitamos movernos a, a esta manera para proteger no solamente nosotros mismos, sino a uh, todos uh, alrededor de nosotros. Thank you. Dios en su misericordia. 
For those members of our congregation that are older and are suffering from chronic health problems that forbid them from being here, um, D. Roth and the Coopers, and those that are restrained by distance like Gladys Cardwell. Yes. Thank you, Karen. Uh, a prayer for 
the uh, older members who are uh, struggling with uh, their health. Um, some of those include D. Roth uh, and uh, Bob Cooper, as well as Manuel Gomez. And in fact, I don't have that list with me normally. I do, excuse me. But there are some others, and those who are uh, uh, still uh, with us as members of the church, and we hold them dear to us who cannot be with us because of their distance, they live so far away. So we want to keep all of these uh, persons in our prayers and ask for God's healing and in their lives. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd like to lift up uh, particularly uh, the grandson of Tina Yates. She asked that we keep her grandson in prayer as they anticipate <laughs> Uh, a uh, brain surgery on her grandson August the 20th, and it's going to be very complicated, she said. So uh, please, Tina Gates is the daughter of uh, Paul Verbeck, who passed away just uh, a few weeks ago. God in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. Let's bow our heads in prayer. O oh, Eternal One, whose message to us has always been that our relationship with you is bound up in our, the way that we treat others around us. Bend low and bring low your spirit to us this day and touch us with your power. We ask that you will wean us from the tendency to nurture the perceived slights and to put our anger away. Wean us from the tendency, O oh Lord, to take advantage of others for our personal gain and to see others as simply opportunities for our own advancement. Wean us from negativity and from becoming bitter, whether or not we think that we are justified in our feelings. Wean us from all the too human and common tendency to gossip about others and to slander others. And take away from us the malice in our hearts so that we may be able to replace that with care and thanksgiving as well. Danos una constante bondad y compasión por los demás. Manténganos siempre tiernos incluso cuando el mundo nos asesta golpes y reveses difíciles. Enséñenos una vez más sobre tu gracia redentora para que aprendamos, aunque sea lente y tentativamente, a perdonar a los demás. Enséñenos a vivir abundantemente en el futuro como personas victoriosas y expectantes, saludando cada nuevo día con entusiasmo. Y recuérdanos que estamos entre tu amada gracia y que estamos también mientras tu comunidad, una comunidad que nos llama a siempre estar sensibles a las necesidades de otros. En el nombre de Cristo oramos recordando las palabras de Jesús que Jesús enseñó a sus discípulos en español y después en inglés. Padre nuestro que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Hágase tu voluntad, así en la tierra como en el cielo. El pan nuestro de cada día, danoslo hoy y perdónanos nuestras deudas. Así como nosotros perdonamos a nuestros deudores, y no nos dejes caer en la tentación, mas líbranos del mal, porque tuyo es el reino y el poder y la gloria por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Reading of the Gospel, according to St. John, the people started grumbling about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. So they said, this man is Jesus, son of Joseph, isn't he? We know his father and mother. How then does he now say, he came down from heaven. Jesus answered, Stop grumbling among yourselves. People cannot come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me, and I will raise them to life on the last day. The prophets wrote, Everyone will be taught by God. Anyone who hears the Father and learns from Him comes to me. This does not mean that anyone has seen the Father. He who is from God is the only one who has seen the Father. I am telling you the truth. He who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, but they died. But the bread that comes down from heaven is of such a kind that whoever eats it will not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If you eat this bread, you will live forever. The bread that I will give you is my flesh, which I give so that the world may live. Entonces los judíos comenzaron a murmurar contra él, porque dijo, yo soy el pan que bajó del cielo. Y se decían, ¿acaso no es este Jesús el hijo de José? No conocemos a su madre, a su padre y a su madre. ¿Cómo es que sale diciendo, yo bajé del cielo? Dejen de murmurar, replicó Jesús. Nadie puede venir a mí si no lo atrae el Padre que me envió. Y yo lo resucitaré en el día final. En los profetas está escrito a todos los que instruía Dios, en efecto todos, todo el que escucha al Padre y aprende de él, viene a mí. Al Padre nadie lo ha visto, excepto el que viene de Dios, solo él ha visto al Padre. Ciertamente, Les aseguro que el que cree tiene vida eterna. Yo soy el pan de vida. Los que los antepasados de ustedes comieron el maná en el desierto y sin embargo murieron. Pero este es el pan que baja del cielo. El que come de él no muere. Yo soy el pan que bajó del cielo. Si alguno come de este pan, vivirá para siempre. Este pan es mi carne que daré para que el mundo viva. Dios bendiga la lectura de su palabra. Let us pray before receiving the message. 
Oremos antes de recibir el mensaje. Gracias Dios por tu lectura que hemos escuchado y leído. Una lectura que nos desafía ser seguidores de Cristo y entregar nuestras vidas una, una vez más a ti. Lord, we give thanks to you for the word that we have read and heard in your scriptures, a word that challenges us to follow you daily. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the medieval times, people learned about the Christian faith in ways that are very different from us today. Because back then, everybody except the monks were illiterate, the church sponsored plays that dramatized the lives of the saints. So the townspeople would go to the main plaza and they would watch the plays of the saints. And that's how they would learn about the saints. I'm not going to provide you with a play today, but I am going to tell you the story of one Christian woman who epitomizes the Christian life that Paul calls us to live from the reading in Ephesians today. In the passage in Ephesians, Paul tells the Christians there, let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. Then he says, put away from you all bitterness, all wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and instead be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Paul then reaches the height of his exhortation when he says to the Ephesians, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Hoy quiero contar la historia de una mujer cristiana que personifica la vida cristiana que Pablo nos llama a vivir en este pasaje en Efesios. En el pasaje de en Efesios, Pablo dice a los cristianos, ninguna palabra corrompida salga de vuestra boca, sino la que sea buena para la necesaria edificación, a fin de dar gracia a los oyentes. Luego Pablo dice, quítense de vosotros toda amargura, enojo, ira, gritería, maledecencia y toda malicia. Antes sed bondadosos unos con otros, misericordiosos, perdonando unos a otros como Dios también los perdonó a vosotros en Cristo. Pablo llega entonces a la cima de su exhortación cuando dice a Efesios, sed pues imitadores de Dios, como hijos e hijas amados, y vivir en amor como Cristo nos amó y se entregó a sí mismo por nosotros, ofrenda y sacrificio fragrante a Dios. One of the joys at my job at a seminary in Austin, where I was for there for 16 years at Seminary of the Southwest, one of the joys was meeting some very interesting people. I encountered a woman who embodied this passage in Ephesians that calls us to be imitators of God. And as I came to know this woman, I discovered that it truly is possible to be successful in becoming an imitator of God. It is not an ideal to which we cannot attain. It is attainable. So I want to tell you about this person because she has been in so inspirational to me and I hope that she will be inspirational to you also. So I share this story of this woman to show that it's possible to be an imitator of God and in so doing to lift up others around us. Her name is Helen Appleberg. 
back in 2002, 2012, which would have been nine years ago, Helen was 82 years old when I first met her, and she was still going strong. She had been throughout her adult life a businesswoman, but later in life, she felt a call to ordain ministry in the Episcopal Church. And in the Episcopal Church, they call it the ordained priesthood. So she went before her diocese commission on ministry at age 59 and asked to be accepted as a candidate for the priesthood. Well, you can imagine that the commission members took a look at Helen and said to her, if you enter seminary at age 59, you'll graduate when you're 62. And this will only give you three to five years left in full-time ordained ministry. So the Commission on Ministry told Helen that it was really too late in her life to become a priest. Durante mi ternura en el seminario de el suroeste episcopal en Austin, yo encontré a una sacerdote de la iglesia episcopal. Su nombre se llama Helen Appleberg y tenía 82 años cuando la conocí por la primera vez en 2012. Y todavía estaba muy fuerte, muy activa. Había sido una mujer de negocios durante toda su vida adulta, pero más tarde en su vida sintió un llamado uh, al ministerio ordenado en la iglesia episcopal. Y así que se presentó ante la Comisión del Ministerio Ordenado de su diócesis a la edad de 59 años y pidió ser aceptado como candidato para el sacerdocio. Bueno, puedes imaginar que los miembros de la Comisión la miraron y dijeron, si ingresas al seminario a la edad de 59 años, te graduarás a los 62 y este solo te dejará unos pocos años en el ministerio ordenado. Entonces la comisión de miembros del ministerio pensó que era demasiado tarde para que Helen se convirtiera en un sacerdote y no aprobó su candidatura para el sacerdocio. Helen requested to be a candidate for the priesthood in the Episcopal Church but her candidacy was denied because the Commission on Ministry thought that she was too old to study for the priesthood to begin studying at the age of 59. But one of Helen's qualities is that she is persistent. So even though she was denied candidacy to the priesthood in the Episcopal Church, she went ahead and enrolled in a seminary in Houston anyway so that she could begin studying for the priesthood even though she was denied candidacy. Helen would just not take no for an answer. Somehow she convinced the Commission on Ministry during her time there at seminary to accept her as a candidate for ordained ministry. So one of the qualities about Helen is that she imitates God's qualities by not taking no for an answer. She is persistent. Helen imitates God by her being persistent in achieving her Christian calling. You know, God is persistent with us also. Like Helen, God does not always take no for an answer, and God is persistent in God's love for us also, and in God's calling us to respond to God's love. One friend of Helen compared her to a river Whenever a river, a river is always going downstream, except for the river of St. John's in Florida, which somehow goes upstream, but every other river goes downstream, and it always keeps flowing, no matter what obstacle gets in its way. And in this manner, Helen was an imitator of God, because God's love keeps flowing, no matter how many obstacles we put in God's way, God's love is still flowing. No matter what we do to keep God at bay, God is always there calling us and, and being ready to offer forgiveness for, for us. In this way, God is relentless. And in that way, Hel Helen is relentless. 
Como Elena, Dios nos acepta. No acepta un no por su respuesta. Dios es persistente en su amor por nosotros y en su llamado a responder a su amor. Un amigo de Helen la comparó como un río. Siempre que un río encuentra un, a un obstáculo, simplemente encuentra otra ruta alrededor y sigue fluyendo abajo. Helen es como este río que sigue fluyendo, no importa qué obstáculos se interpongan en su camino. En esa manera, Helen, Elena es una imitadora de Dios. El amor de Dios sigue fluyendo, no importa cuántos obstáculos pongamos en el camino de Dios. No importa lo que hagamos para mantener, mantener a Dios lejos. Dios siempre está allí llamándonos y listo para ofrecernos su perdón y amor. En esta manera, Dios es implacable. Here is how I came to know Helen. The seminary's faculty gave an award each year to someone that they believed exemplified servant leadership. A servant leader is someone who gives of himself or herself to others to improve their own welfare. They do it in the form of leadership, but they do it in the form of being a servant at the same time. And of course, Jesus is the epitome of a servant leader, for he taught his disciples about the Christian faith while also serving the people who followed him. Jesus talked about how important it was for his disciples to serve others, to serve them by healing them, by providing food and drink when they were hungry, such as feeding of the 5,000 and offering them forgiveness. Jesus showed that he was a servant leader when he washed the feet of his disciples. Well, the faculty chose Helen Appleberg as that year's recipient of the Servant Leadership Award, and it was my responsibility to write the memorial citation that was going to be given to her as she received the award. And so in order to write the citation, I needed to get to know her and to learn things about her, and to understand why she was so deserving of this award. So to, to get to know why Helen deserved this Servant Leadership Award, I called six of her co-workers and her friends and asked them to share their thoughts on Helen and to tell me what she had accomplished so that she deserved this award. And what I learned from these persons was that What was most important about Helen was not so much what she had accomplished, not so much what she had done, but who she was. Here are some of the words of the people that they used to describe Helen. Joyful, encourager, a listener, a walking saint, a mentor. And someone said, she is at peace with who she is and what she does. She had served for, as a mentor to many other women priests who followed her. And I asked someone what Helen was most passionate about, and she said that Helen is most passionate about being Christ for others. She was also a visionary, and she had boundless faith and hope and was constantly optimistic She has a joy of life that is un indomitable, laughter and a great sense of humor. La Facultad del Seminario este año eligió a la reverenda Helen Appleberg como la receptora del premio de liderazgo de uh, servicio de este año. Y era mi responsabilidad escribir la mención para el premio. Y para escribir la cita tuve que conocerla y aprender sobre las cosas que ella había logrado que hicieron merecedora de este premio. Some of the people had, that I talked to, or one of them had traveled with Helen one time on a trip to Europe. And one time Helen and her friend were on a train traveling in Europe and they began to play a game of checkers on the train. 
And for some reason, as they were playing checkers, they attracted the attention of others around them. Several people then started talking and gathering, and they just ended up having a spontaneous party just because they had started to play checkers. That's who Helen is. She attracts people to her because of her joyful presence and her delight in life. So another quality, another way that Helen is an imitator of God is that she is joyful. Un ejemplo de liderazgo de Helen fue el establecimiento de un nuevo ministerio llamado Comunidad de Esperanza. Después de graduarse del seminario a la edad de 62 años, Helen sirvió como capellán en el Hospital Episcopal en, en Houston. El capellán del hospital notó que había muchos laicos, mucha gente de las iglesias, que se sentían llamados a visitar a los enfermeros, a los enfermos, pero no tenían ningún uh, entrenamiento para atender a los enfermos. Entonces Helen desarrolló un plan de estudios para capacitar a los laicos sobre cómo ministrar a los enfermos en el hospital. Y debido a que enfatizaba la importancia del ministerio en la comunidad, lo llamó Comunidad de Esperanza. Y después de un tiempo, docenas de laicos uh, docenas de la habían pasado por esta capacitación de Community of Hope. Luego, cuando la Comunidad de Esperanza había florecido, el diócesis, uh, que uh, para nosotros es, co es conferencia, pero el diócesis de Texas, alrededor de Houston, adoptó a este ministerio como un ministerio oficial del diócesis. Entonces, amplió uh, este ministerio y empezaba a dar capacitación a cientos de personas en ayudarles cómo atender a las necesidades de los enfermos en el hospital. Y siguió difundiéndose hasta ser un ministerio internacional, capacitando a laicos en Canadá, los Estados Unidos, México y en regiones de África. Y ahora es un ministerio internacional que uh, apoya los, los esfuerzos de los laicos a dar apoyo y socorro a los que están enfermos en los hospitales. Helen was able to be an imitator of God because she listened to God in prayer. So this is also key for us who are called to be imitators of God. The key is to spend time in prayer. And when we pray, we need to spend time not just asking God for our particular needs, which is important, but also listening for God, listening for what the Holy Spirit is saying to us and allowing the Holy Spirit to nurture our soul so that the Spirit can dwell among us. ¿Cómo podemos convertirnos a ser imitadores de Dios? Otra parte de la respuesta proviene de la segunda parte de este pasaje en Efesios, cuando Pablo dice, sean imitadores de Dios como los hijos e hijas amados y amadas. Si somos hijos de Dios y si somos amados de Dios, podemos ser como Dios, así como un niño admira a su padre o su madre y quiere ser como él o ella. Habiendo conocido a Helen Appleberg, así como a algunos otros cristianos en mi vida, puedo decir que sí, es posible que seamos buenos imitadores de Dios. How can we become imitators for God? Another part of that answer comes from the second part of this passage in Ephesians, when Paul says, be imitators of God like beloved children. If we are children of God, and if we are beloved of God, then we can be like God as a child admires his or her parent and wants to be like his or her father and our mother. Now, having, to come, having come to know Helen and also a number of other Christians in my life, I can say, yes, 
it is possible for us to become imitators of God. May God bless this word. Que Dios bendiga esta palabra. Amen. Our closing hymn, the himno de clausura, is Pesibibimos when we are living. Verses 1 and 2 in Espanol, then 4 in English. 1 and 2 in Spanish, then. You may be seated. I want to uh, let you know that the date for our next diaper exchange at Owenwood is Saturday, August the 28th from uh, 9 to 12. And uh, I hope that you'll be able to join us for that. We've, we've done, I think, of a th three months worth. And so congratulations on three months. And we're going to continue to do that as we get to know more of the people uh, at Owenwood. Uh, vamos a continuar sirviendo y apoyando a la gente uh, in Owenwood y dan, uh, expresando nuestro, nuestra fe y amor para con ellos al, en la distribución de las pañales el 28 de agosto. See there are others. So, uh, also, we will have, uh, estamos empezando uh, un nuevo uh, grupo de duelo uh, que también se llevará a cabo el 28 de abril a las uh, diez y media aquí en la iglesia. La reverenda Sandra Cabrera va a dirigir este grupo. Y este es un, uh, un ministerio que teníamos antes de la pandemia, estamos uh, renovando, estamos empezando lo, uh, de nuevo. So, si ustedes necesitan uh, apoyo en cual tipo de, cualquier tipo de, de duelo o, o si conocen a otras personas que necesitan apoyo, uh, invítalos a, a este grupo el 28 a las 10 y media.
Uh, I was mentioning that we are beginning a grief group, uh, grief support group uh, in Spanish, which will be led by Reverend Sandra Cabrera on the 28th uh, of August as well at 10.30 here at the church. Also, uh, to let you know, we will have our annual charge conference on uh, September the 27th, I believe at 7 p.m. And it will be uh, in person here at the church. Uh, and of course, we certainly need all of the, the church leaders to attend, but any church member is also welcome to attend uh, that charge conference. So I hope that you will uh, put that on your calendar as well. Do we have any other announcements? Then let us uh, rise to receive the benediction. Go out and imitate God. Live in love and put your hope in God's word and let your own words be truthful and constructive. Do not allow any room for evil and may God always hear your voice. And may Christ Jesus raise you to new life. And may the Holy Spirit nourish you in a life of love. Sal e imita a Dios viviendo en amor. Pon tu esperanza en la palabra de Dios. Y deja que tus propias palabras sean veraces y constructivas. No dejes lugar para el mal y que Dios siempre escuche tu voz. Que Cristo Jesús los resucite a una nueva vida y que el Espíritu Santo los alimente para la vida de el amor. Vamos en paz para amar y servir al Señor. Amén.